So the Institute of Risk Management was a big part of getting started in this, uh, this area, it sounds like. And you mentioned these uh, opinions of senior leaders and board members. I've seen those surveys where they uh, feel that you know, risk management is basically a compliance function. Why, why do they feel that way? What, what, what are chief risk officers doing wrong in their opinion? Well, one of the things is they keep talking about risk. <laughs> they keep talking about risk. I mean, just uh, just uh, this week, I was talking to a group in Tallahassee, and I, I, I share the same metaphor. We are all in the business of taking risk. Mm -hmm. We have to take risk to survive. And for example, every time you leave your home, you are taking a risk. You're taking actually multiple risks, especially if you're going to drive. You might be in an accident. You might um, have, have some lethal consequences to that. You might be delayed. There are all kinds of things that could happen. And the thing is that every, if, if at every time you leave your, your home, somebody pops out and says, I'm, hi, I'm your chief risk officer. Here's a list of all the things that might go wrong. Eventually you're gonna start discarding that person and think they were irrelevant because I've got to go to work. I need to go to work to earn a living. I need to leave to go pick up my children, to meet my wife, to attend this board meeting. I've got to do this. Stop telling me all the things that might go wrong because I need to do this. And to me, it's, they're not, risk practitioners are only focused on the downside. They're not thinking about why people need to take these risks. They're not helping people make these what I call informed and intelligent decisions that weigh all the potential consequences of their actions so that they can now make that appropriate decision and take the right risk. And that's really what it is because we exist, and especially as board members, it's all about taking risks, but it's about taking the right risks and knowing when it's the right time to take this risk or that risk because you need to do that in order to achieve your objective to have a project that is completed on time to achieve your earnings targets, to, to deliver the value uh, of the organization to, to the shareholders, you need to take risk. And the fact that we keep talking about risk instead of achieving objectives is the problem. We are focused, uh, the, too many risk practitioners are focused on, like I said, a list of what could go wrong instead of understanding all the potential things that might happen. So if we, I, I started writing and talking about, let's talk about plain English. Let's use plain English terms to talk about what this is. It's about understanding what might happen, anticipating what might happen. If you do nothing and if you take this option or that option, now, is that okay? If this actually happened, is that okay? Is that acceptable? If not, what are we gonna do about it? Now let's do some things and, and take the right risks, if you like, to achieve our objectives. But it's about moving forward, not being so afraid of stepping out there, because that's all the risk practitioner is talking about, is a list of the things that could go wrong. So for example, if a CFO presents to the board meeting, to the board, here is my projection for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Somebody should be saying, well, what's your confidence level in achieving that. What has to happen if you are to achieve that number? What happens if you don't achieve that number? What's the likelihood of going below that? And why is that? What can we do about that? What's the potential for going over it? What can we do about that? These are the sort of things that business people and board members do all the time. We just don't think about it as risk management, but it is risk management. It's doing it in that more disciplined and structured fashion so that you can make the right decision, anticipating what might happen and doing the best you mm -hmm. can to provide some clarity about what might happen and then take some, the appropriate action. And if the risk officer is focuses more on helping people succeed rather than helping them avoid failure, they're gonna be accepted. Deloitte did this study and only 13% of executives think that risk management is actually helping them set and then execute on strategies. 13%. That's pretty awful. 
if you ask risk officers, yes. if you ask risk officers what's holding you up, why can't you get your risk management program mature? They keep coming back to lack of commitment, lack of support, and lack of resources. Well, why aren't they getting support, commitment, and resources? Because it's because people don't believe that they're adding value. Because all they're doing is telling you about all the things that might go wrong. And yes, we understand that. We're going to put that in the filing with the SEC. We're going to tell the board we we're addressing it, but it's, it's like a separate discussion. Very few organizations, I've only run into one, which was the Hanson Bay Company up in Canada, that when the board talks about strategy, when the board talks about performance, mm -hmm. they also integrate risk fully into that discussion. They don't have a separate meeting about risk. The, the idea you have a risk committee separate from strategy and long-term planning, to me, doesn't make any sense. It all should be one and the same, talking about what might happen and, and let's make sure we have the right discipline and process to understand and react to what might happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that we're starting to see some progress, um, recognizing that so much more is about decision-making and approving it, um, linking in strategy and performance. It's, it started, for example, with Kaplan and uh, the balance scorecard. Um, and Professor Kaplan said, the risk factors and the risk indicators should be in there as well as your performance indicators and status. Um, COSO is starting to talk about improving decision making and but it doesn't, you know, I don't think it goes far enough in the 2017, uh, the ISO community, okay, we'll get into that. but it's still, it's still a gap. And I think I might've told you, Jay, that I, like I said, I've been talking about this for some time and one organization, mm -hmm. uh, changed the name of their function from risk management and to eliminate the use of the word risk and just talk about helping people succeed. And all of a sudden, Management wanted to listen to them. Management wanted to, to work with them and to adopt some of these because they could see that it's all about increasing the likelihood of success, not about addressing the things that could go wrong. Certainly, you need to understand what could go wrong in order to increase the likelihood of success. But when the CFO mm -hmm. comes to you and says, well, I've got a 75% likelihood we'll hit that earnings target, there's also a likelihood, 75% perhaps, of getting different customers to agree to revenue. So what's, I think we should be looking at the likelihood of the reward side as well as the likelihood of the harm side. And again, mm -hmm. too many risk practitioners, the chief risk officer says, my job is only to look at the downside. Somebody else, like the strategy office, who looks at the upside. Well, is the same discipline and method used for both? And how does a board member weigh the harms and the ben and, and the, the good when mm -hmm. there's different methodologies used to assess each one of them? So I, I think that there's a big gap, um, and a board can really start insisting on, have you really thought this through? Mm-hmm. 